In this tutorial, we're going to estimate a model and test for heteroscedasticity. We're going to be following the example presented in Gucciarati's textbook, Econometrics by Example, Second Edition, Chapter 5. So what we're going to be estimating is the determinants of the abortion rate by U.S. state. We've got a series of variables available. For instance, we have the abortion rate, and then we have religion, price, laws, funds, education, income, and picketing. And what we want to do initially it's just estimating an OLS regression of this data, and subsequently we're going to attempt to identify whether heteroscedasticity is present. In a separate tutorial, we'll look at how we could correct for that heteroscedasticity if we identify it. So, let's start off with our regression analysis. So, we enter in a linear regression, and what we want to do is look at the abortion rate as a function of our various um, independent variables. So we include the variables, and what we're going to do is generate a table which matches 5.2 in Gujarati. So once we enter the variables, what we want to do is we want to ensure that we generate the predicted value of y and also the residuals, so that we can subsequently test for heteroscedasticity. So we have various different options available here. For instance, in statistics, previously we've looked at collinearity diagnostics. What we want here is we want to save the unstandardized predicted values and the unstandardized residuals. Once we save both of these, we want to then test for heteroscedasticity using them. So we'll select continue and we'll select OK. Now, the regression output that we actually produce here matches the regression output produced in 5.2 of Gujarati. What we are subsequently interested in doing is testing whether heteroscedasticity is present. Now, in order to test whether it is present, what we want, will initially do is replicate figure 5.2 from the book, which plots the squared residuals against the predicted value of the abortion rate. Now, first of all, we have to generate this variable squared residuals. So we're just going to do that using transform and compute variable. I'm going to select the standardized, um, unstandardized residuals, or ES1. And what we're going to have is creating a new variable called ORES12, where the 2 indicates that squared, and it's going to be the square of ORES underscore 1. We press OK, and this computes the squared um, residuals for us. Now, we then subsequently want to plot these squared residuals, and we do so by going to Graphs and Chart Builder. What we want to do is create a scatter diagram. We want to add the various elements to create an x and y axis, where we have on the y axis res 1, 2, so our residuals squared. And on the y axis, what we want is our unstandardized predicted values. We're going to select OK, and we'll generate then a predicted value on the x against our squared residuals. Now what we want to look for here is to see whether the spread of the residuals gets wider as the predicted value increases. And we see that it does in this case. We see a funnel type of shape where it's expanding outwards. This is an indication that heteroscedasticity may be present. Now while this is a nice visual representation of the analysis, typically what we would want to do is explicitly test using a statistical method whether hetero is present or not. The graphical analysis usually gives an indication, but in and of itself is not sufficient. One common method used is the Bruch Pagan test, which we're going to apply. And essentially the Bruch Pagan test, we just replace our dependent variable with the sum or with the squared residuals. We include all the original independent variables. So we can quickly do this in SPSS by going analyze regression and linear. And what we're just going to do is replace the dependent variable with the squared values okay, of our residuals, keeping all the independent variables the same. And what we can do this time is we don't want to save our standardized or unstandardized uh, predicted and residual values. So we're just going to deselect those. We're going to press OK. Now, what we're generally doing here is creating 5.3 of Gucciarati. 
where we have estimated out our bruch pagan test. Of interest to us is the sig value for the F test. Essentially, what this value represents is a test of the null hypothesis of homoscedastic error terms against the alternative hypothesis of heteroscedastic error terms. What we can see is we can reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity, and we conclude that heteroscedasticity is present in the model. Now, typically what we would do is we would correct for this. However, what we're going to do now is show an alternative method of testing for heteroscedasticity, and that's the method known as White's test of heteroscedasticity. Now, there's a White's test where we essentially include, again as the dependent variable, the squared of the residuals on the independent variables, the square of the independent variables, and the product of the independent variables. The problem with this is that it really starts to eat into your degrees of freedom for your model. So what we're going to actually apply is the abridged white test presented in Table 5.4 of Butrasia. In this instance, what we are going to do is use the squared residuals, again, as our dependent variable, and we're going to use the predicted value of the abortion rate and the predicted value squared in our independent variable column. And this is essentially going to give us what's referred to as the bridge whites test. Now, before we can do this, we again need to create the squared of the predicted abortion rate. We've already told SPSS to calculate the predicted abortion rate, and then we just need to square it. So again, we can go to transform and compute variable. And what I'm going to call this is essentially the predicted value squared. So what we want to do so we want to add our predicted value and indicate that's going to be squared. So we compute this and then what we do is we simply run our analysis. So again we go analyze, regression and linear. This time we're keeping the residual squared as the dependent variable but we are removing all our independent variables and adding in our predicted values. Okay, so we've got the predicted values and the predicted values squared. Select OK. We run our analysis and again this analysis matches that presented in Table 5.4 of Bucciarashi. What we are interested in is the SIG value for our F test again. Again we have a null hypothesis of homoscedastic error terms which is an alternative heteroscedastic error terms. We reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity using our White's test and conclude that heteroscedasticity is present in our model. So White's test has supported our Bruch Pagan test and both have supported our scatter plot originally. Therefore, we conclude that in this regression we have a heteroscedasticity problem. And what we should do is correct that problem before we interpret our regression coefficients from our original estimation. We will show in the next video tutorial how we can actually correct for heteroscedasticity.